Okay, so this review goes back to the first days of school. Okay, where the first thing we talked about was transformations, right? Transformations that occur on parent functions. So we had a lot of different parent functions, right? We had like x squared and root x and cube root of x and x cubed and absolute value x. All of those basic parent functions where almost all of them, I think pretty much all of them start somewhere at the, ver or the origin, right? So your x squared starts at the origin, your square root starts at the origin. All of these parent functions have something to do at the origin, zero comma zero. So when we're talking about transformations, it is how far and in what direction are we moving that vertex, right? Your origin point. How many units down are we going and how many units left or right? Or is it a reflection? Are we reflecting it across an axis? So remember, everything that happens inside of parentheses affects your x coordinate, right? It's the horizontal transformation that is happening to your graph. So in this case, if we have an x plus 4 in parentheses, that means it has been translated 4 units to the left direction, a 4 units left shifting of your origin point for your, um, in this case, cubic, your cubic polynomial, okay? Everything outside of the parentheses affects the y value, and the y value is a vertical transformation. So the y values would be moved six units down from the origin. The minus six on the outside of your parentheses means your graph has been shifted six units down. And then we have this little negative, pesky little negative out front here. Okay, this is some type of a reflection and in this case, because it's in front of your parentheses, that is a x-axis reflection. Okay, I have to think for a minute. This is an x-axis reflection because it makes the y values negative. Right? The y values on top become the y values on bottom. So those are the three transformations that happen from the parent function x cubed. Right? This is our parent function and g is the transformation that is happening to that parent function. Okay, so be able to list all those transformations, left, right, um, up and down, x-axis or y-axis reflection, um, things like that. Okay, um, we struggled with this kind of question on our tests in the past. h of x is formed by a transformation by this rule. Okay, so this is the rule of our transformation. Negative 2 times f of x plus 5 plus 4. Okay, so we have to remember anything in parentheses affects the x value. Right, so when we have an x value, we are just going to do this to it. Okay, so the x plus 5 affects the x value. So if we have an x value of 2, then the new x is going to be 2 plus 5, which is going to end up at 7. Okay, And then the other stuff all affects the y value. So first we're going to multiply the y value by negative 2, and then we're going to add 4 to the y value. Okay, so multiply the y value by negative 2 and then add 4 means we have negative 2 times negative 4 that's our y value plus 4 is 8 plus 4 which is 12 so this point would end up at the coordinate 7 comma 12 under this rule of transformation Okay, so we are multiplying the y value by negative 2, and then we are adding 4 to that y value, and the x, we're just adding 5. Okay, our next bit is about domain, right? We've done a lot with domain, so here we have domains from graphs, right? Domains from graphs, looking at open circles and closed circles, getting parentheses and or brackets. Okay, but then we have to calculate domain um, from a couple different functions. One of them is, of course, a square root function. A square root function has a domain restriction because you can't take the square root of a negative. 
which means we have to restrict anything underneath the radical to be strictly non-negative. So you only take the number underneath the radical, this 2x minus 8, that thing has to be non-negative, right? It can be 0, which is fine, or it can be positive. So we solve this equation for x, and we get x has to be greater than 4, okay? So if x is anything less than 4, you're going to get a negative square root, and we can't take the negative square root in the calculator, right? It's an unreal, it's an imaginary number, and we only want to talk about real numbers. So as an interval, that's from bracket 4 to infinity. Okay, so domains of square roots. The thing underneath the square root must be non-negative. So we set it greater than or equal to 0. Okay, we set it greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to add 2x to the right to keep my x value positive. Right, and notice now the x is now less than, which is perfectly fine to have a less than number. So this says x is less than 2.5 which means from negative infinity to positive 2.5 as the answer for this, okay? So if you have a negative x, that means you're gonna have a less than domain because you can only have negatives multiplied by negatives to give you a positive square root. And then our last one here, e, this is a rational equation. It has an x in the denominator. For the rational things, the denominator can't be zero. We cannot divide a function by zero, so we have to restrict any number that makes the denominator zero. The numerator, we don't care. Zero over five is zero, that's fine. But you can't have five over zero. So we're gonna restrict any number that makes the denominator zero. So we add nine to both sides, and taking the square root, Remember, we have positives and negatives when you take the square root in algebra. So the positive 3 and negative 3. So as an interval, right, let's just look at this as a line graph so we can look at the interval. It can't be negative 3 and it can't be positive 3. So those are our only two open circles. Everything else should be available. Everything less than, everything between, and everything to the right. So this is how I'm gonna help me set this up as an interval. So everything from negative infinity to negative three, right, we jump over negative three. So that's on both sides of the U, and then from three to infinity. Right, always with parentheses, we never have to have a bracket in this case. Okay, parentheses and parentheses. So solving domain, there's two restrictions Rationals, the denominator can't be equal to zero. And for square roots, the square root can't be negative. So we have to restrict both of those things. And here we have domain and range from a graph. Okay, so let's look. Here we have an um, open hole. So negative six gets a parenthesis for the domain, by the way. And we're good, 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 good. Even here at negative one, even though this has an open hole, this has a closed hole, which means that we're good at that point, and the arrow means it goes on forever to the right. So from negative six to infinity is the domain for this graph. And the range comes from the bottom up, right? Because we have an arrow going off, that means we start at negative infinity. And everything is good until we get to here. Yep, that's still good. Even though we have a circle at three, there's a closed dot right there, and we go all the way up to positive five. Okay, use the graph to answer the following question. So here's our graph over here, right? We have a graph of F and a graph of G. So I'm gonna be sliding back and forth. So this part, part A says F plus G, right? This is a combination. This means what is the value at F of two? plus the value at g of 2. Okay, so that's what that means. So we come to our graph. When x is 2, we have a y value of 4. And then when g is 2, we have a y value of negative 2. So remember, these are always y values that we are adding together. And the answer is 2. 
f of g of negative 6. This is a combina no, a composition. So first we're going to evaluate what is g at negative 6. Okay, so what is the y value from the g graph when x is negative 6? And it looks like that y value from the g graph is going to be positive 2. So now I'm looking for what is f at 2. What is the y value from the f graph when x is 2? And that answer is 4. So f of 2 equals 4. Okay, so be able to do a composition. Oh, here's some PEMDAS, right? We've got to struggle with the PEMDAS. So first we do g of 6. G of 6. G of 6. So that's the uh, solid graph. G of 6 is 2. So that's 3 times 2 minus 4 times okay, F at negative 8. So here's negative 8. The F graph is down here. So that's negative 2. All right, so this is, a, this is a PEMDAS question. We have to multiply 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times this is minus 8. You multiply before we add or subtract. And then minus the minus is a plus, and our answer is 14. Okay, PEMDAS, we always multiply before we add or subtract. Intervals where f of x is greater. So here we're looking for where is the graph above the x-axis. Right, everything is always above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So greater than or equal to and the graph of f. Um, so here, right, the graph of f is the dashed one from negative 7 all the way to 10. Okay, But we're not going to have a bracket. We're going to have, once again, a parenthesis at 10. Even though it touches there, our answer is from negative 7 to 10. Because at negative 7 and at negative 10, it's equal to. So we can't have those with brackets. This next one says less than or equal to. So it's on or below the x-axis. So here we will have brackets because it can be on. G is on or below. So below from negative 5 to negative 3. Right, that's one interval. And then again, it's below from 1 to 4. This is where the graph is below the x-axis or touching the x-axis, which is why we have brackets, because or equal to is OK. Intervals where g of x is increasing. So that means that the graph is going up. g of x is increasing from negative 4 to negative 1. So with parentheses and increasing from 2 up to forever right because our arrow goes on forever it's going to be increasing in this direction forever so it is increasing the graph is going up the y values are getting larger from negative 4 to negative 1 right always an x value and then again from 2 on to infinity those are the places on your graph where the y values are increasing from the g function. Okay, I'm going to um, erase this real quick, so hang on. There. So now we want where are they equal. Okay, where they're equal is where the graphs cross. Right? And these are going to be exact x values where the graphs cross. So they are equal when x equals negative 6 and they're equal when x equals positive 6. So we're not looking at the y values where they cross, we're only equaling the x values. So negative 6 and positive 6, those graphs cross each other. Negative 6 and positive 6. So not as intervals, so don't put them in parentheses, just a list of two x values where those graphs cross. Okay, f of x is less than means that f is below the g graph. Where is the F graph below the G graph? Let's see where that happens. F graph is below the G graph um, in here, right? Because the G graph doesn't, doesn't exist on to the left of negative 7. 
So none of this exists in our comparison either. So from negative 7 to negative 5, f is below. And then from negative 6 to 10, f is also below the g graph. And so two intervals where the dashed line is below the solid line, negative 7 and negative 6. And from 6 to 10. Okay, where one graph is above or below the other one. We we'll always use parentheses. Unless it says equal to, then we can use brackets. Okay, so here's an interesting question. Where is the product of two y values greater than zero? So these either have to be a positive times a positive, or they can be a negative times a negative, right? And those both give you positive values. So that means that the graphs are either both above the x-axis, or both of them are below the x-axis. So we're looking for places where both of them are above or both of them are below, okay? So they are both above the x-axis right here, right? They're both above the x-axis. The dashed line and the solid line are both above the x-axis there. Um, they're both above the x-axis here between negative 3 and 1, okay, both above. Um, and it looks like they're both above the x-axis all the way over to there. Okay, so we have three different intervals where both of the graphs are above the x-axis and no intervals where they're both below, unfortunately. So that is also be a place where their product is zero. So from negative seven to negative five, and then negative three to one, and then four to 10. Right, all those places are where both the graphs are both above the x-axis or both below. Right, but they all have to be both above. So be it. And now we have this. If h of x is this um, square root function, for what values of x will h equal f of g of 0? Okay, so first we have to figure out what f of g of 0 is. So what is g of 0? Well, when g is 0, the y value is 2. So now what is f of 2? f of 2, the f graph when x is 2 is up here at positive 4. So we are being asked, when will this equation root x plus 1 plus 2 be equal to 4? Right? So this is an algebraic equation that we can solve for x. So we'll subtract 2 from both sides because we do simple math before we do complicated math. We subtract 2, and now we can square both sides because we have one thing to square on both sides. So x plus 1 equals 4, well, minus 1 from both sides, so x equals 3. There's only one value of x where our um, square root equation will be equal to f of g of 0. Okay, so we have to evaluate what is f of g is 0 and then set it equal to our equation that we are given. Okay, so this is page one of the comprehensive review for your comprehensive test. Thanks. Goodbye.